We present Jimmy Clitheroe as the Clitheroe Kid with Peter Sinclair, Patricia Burke, Danny Ross, and Diana Day in... Love and Marriage. Oh, you know, Pat, this'll give Jimmy a laugh when he gets home from the Sunday school. <laughs> Alfie Hall, a soldier. Why should England tremble? <laughs> Uh, keep your voice down. Alf is with Susan in the front room. And anyway, he's not a proper soldier. He's a territorial. Is he? Anyway, I'm going to get the tea ready for all of us. Well, there's uh, Field Marshal Montgomery stopping for tea. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's not. He's got to be at the barracks in London before midnight. And if Jimmy comes in while I'm in the kitchen, don't let him start any trouble. Well, I'll do my best, Pat. Poor old Alfie. <laughs> He won't survive a week's training. We'll shoot him in the first day. <laughs> Hello, Grandad. Well, where is he? Where's who? That great fighting soldier from Oldham. Napoleon Bony Legs. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Alfie, you've heard then. Yeah, the fellow next door told me. He said if they're all like Alfie in the British Army, he's emigrating to Russia. <laughs> Where is he, Grandad? Alfie, always in the front room bidding a soldier's farewell to Susan. You mean they'll be having a last goodbye snog? <laughs> <laughs> I'll go and have a word with him. Now, you watch what you're doing, my lad. Your mother says there's to be no trouble. Don't worry, Grandad. I won't go in and cause trouble. I'll just stop outside and have a crafty earwig. <laughs> Where's that keyhole? You say you won't be back till next Saturday night, Alfie? Yes, that's right, Susan. We're under army discipline from 23.59 tonight till 800 next Saturday morning, I think. Give us a kiss. Hello, he's on manoeuvres already. Ah, <laughs> oh, thanks, Susan. And now, a kiss for every day I'll be away. <laughs> it's going to be a long walk. <laughs> Hey, oh, it's you, ma'am. I'm just listening to Alfie going into action. Now, look. I am sick and tired of telling you about eavesdropping. You're always doing it. But, ma'am, this is different. I mean, I don't want Alfie to go without saying goodbye to me. If I don't wait here, he might forget. To give you a shilling. Yeah. <laughs> ma'am, you don't think I'm waiting here for Alfie when he's going off to the army just for a shilling? No. No, I'm after half a dollar. <laughs> Look, you can have a quick word with Alfie while you're giving him this cup of tea. Right, oh, ma'am. And don't let me catch you listening at doors again or there'll be real trouble. Yes, ma'am. In I go. Right, Alfie, lay down your arms. The battle's over. <laughs> what do you want, cheeky? Here you are, Alfie. Naffy up. Oh, that's an nice cup of tea. <laughs> Uh, do you want anything else, Alfie? A bun, sandwich, piece of pie? Um, no, thanks, Jimmy. Did just this cup of tea. Right, that'll be a shilling. All right. Wait <laughs> hey, a minute. You mean I've got to pay for the tea? Why not? It's about time you paid. You've had enough free tea in this house to float the Queen Mary. <laughs> Don't be rude. You're sure you won't stay to tea, Alfie? We've got some trifle. I made it this morning. Oh, no, thanks, Susan. I've got no time for your trifle. Good lad. <laughs> You don't want to be poisoned, do you? No, I, no I, I didn't mean it that way. You see, I, I've got to be on my way now because it's a long ride to London and I'm not sure of the way because I can't go on the M1 on my bike and the other way is a bit tricky. I could get lost. Oh, well, why don't you? <laughs> I'll, I'll clout you with my kit bag in a minute. Just ignore him, Alfie. I'll get my coat and walk up the street with you. Yeah, right, old Susan. But honestly, Jimmy, you want lock up. Trying to charge me for a cup of tea. Look, if you want a shilling off me, just ask me for it. All right. Can I have a shilling, Alfie? No, you can't. <laughs> It'll be worth at least two bob to get me to spy on our Susan. You spy on Susan? Yes, so I can report to you about all the lads she goes out with while you're away. Give over. Susan won't go out with any other lads. You what? She'll have one lined up for every night. There'll be Lofty Johnson on Monday, Specky Fred on Tuesday, 
Gingy eats on Wednesday. Hey, now, wait a minute. She doesn't go out on Wednesday night. She stops in to wash her hair. Yeah, and guess who'll be holding the soap for her? Oh. <laughs> Look, you're wrong. I don't believe you. Look, here's to Bob. But I'm, I'm not giving you because I want you to spy on Susan. I, I trust Susan. Ooh, there's one born every minute. Anyway, thanks for the two, Bob, outfit. I'll think about you and your slick trench every time I chew a jelly baby. <laughs> me. I'm trying to get ready to go out. Who are you going out with tonight, Sour Puss? I'm not going out with anybody. Why, will nobody have you? <laughs> Shut up and leave me alone. You're only behaving like this because Mother and Granddad are out. I'll bet Alf is having a good time down in London. Has he phoned you yet? No, he hasn't. He'll be far too busy. Yep, I can see him now with a photo of you pinned on the wall for target practice. <laughs> Don't be so cheeky. I'm going upstairs for my coat. Answer that door. A red hole, Lavinia. <laughs> oh, yes, it'll be Ozzy. Come in, fat tum, before the cat gets you. A beg your pardon? Oh, it's a man. Uh, what do you want? Well, civility for a start. I mean, do you usually greet calls with abusive words? <laughs> no, we usually clout him with the horse stand. <laughs> well, I'll ignore your impertinence, because I'm in rather a hurry. I'd like to use your telephone. You have got a telephone, I take it. Yes, we have got a telephone, but you can't take it. <laughs> no, stand aside, boy. I'll speak to your parents, if I may. Well, there's only me mum and granddad, and they're out. Oh, I see, dear, dear. Well, look, my name's Nicholson, Harvey Nicholson. 24 Poplar Grove, just round the corner from here, and by... What are you staring at? You, your Adam's apple's got will wobble. <laughs> You know, my boy, when I married and had a son like you, you'd feel the weight of my hand. My telephone is out of order, worse luck. Now, may I proceed? Is something the matter? Yes, it's this young... Oh, oh good evening. Oh, how do you do? Uh, hello. Uh, is my brother causing you any trouble? Oh, uh, no, no, not at all, no. No boy could be troublesome who was the brother. Uh, such a charming sister. <laughs> you big flannel mouth. <laughs> now, please do allow me to introduce myself. Harvey Nicholson. Harvey the name. <laughs> New around here. My telephone's gone US, you see, and I have an urgent local call to make. <laughs> oh, well, go ahead and use ours. Oh, thank you. That's very decent of you, Miss Solomon. Uh, uh, Clitheroe. Yes, Miss Clitheroe. <laughs> you have another name, haven't you? Yes, Scraggy Neck. <laughs> Uh, it's Susan. I really must go now. Susan. Oh, must you? Pity. Pity. Hope to see you again sometime. Yes, sir. Well, uh, goodbye, Mr. Nicholson. Uh, Nicholson, yes. Bye-bye. <laughs> I say, what a charming girl. Very pretty indeed. Yes, sir. <laughs> now then, my boy, can you leave me alone while I'm phoning, will you? Oh, uh, yes, of course. Um, uh, do you want me to show you how it works? The telephone? Show me how it works. I'm not a brainless half-wit, you know. You could have fooled me. <laughs> now, look. Look, there's something you can do for me. Go out and get me 20 cigarettes, will you? Here's the cash. Oh, well, uh, I could nip round to the corner shop, but only oh, it's me bad leg, you know. I broke it and it cost a lot of money to mend it. <laughs> I'll see you're rewarded when you return. Oh, that's better. Uh, won't be long, mister. However, could such a charming girl have such a loathsome brother? <laughs> Still, I think I'm onto a good thing here. <laughs> Hello. Northern Publications. Oh, the editor, please. Hello, Gerald. <laughs> Harvey here. What? The model agency. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm not going now, boy. No, no. I found the very girl we're looking for. <laughs> mm, yes, just better, just better. Yeah. For the front page of the new magazine. Yes, you know, love and marriage. Uh, look, Gerald, take it from me. I do know what I'm doing, Gerald. <laughs> She's perfect, my dear fellow. But the ideal radiant young bride. <laughs> yes. Well, uh, take her photo in a wedding gown outside a church. She's just the person I want. Hmm? What? Well, it'll be her mother, I think. Yes. No. 
No, 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 she's not in at the moment. Look, look, jot all this down, will you? Now, this is what we'll do. And take it from me, old boy, this young lady will grace the front page of love and marriage like a queen. <laughs> I'm back, mister. My leg just managed to hold out. Shh, be quiet, boy. I'm still on the telephone. Don't do that. Yes, Gerald? Her name's Susan Clitheroe. Oh, there's no doubt about it. She's just the girl I've been looking for. <laughs> yes, I'll arrange that. Bye-bye. Did you get the cigarettes? Um, uh, yes, um, but I heard you mention our Susan on the phone. Yes, little pigs have big ears. Game <laughs> over. Our Susan's ears aren't that big. <laughs> <laughs> Look, cheerful Charlie, just hand over those cigarettes, will you please? Here you are, uh... You said I'd be rewarded. I haven't forgotten. Oh, good. Yes. Here you are. That's for you. A penny? <laughs> oh, thanks. Marvellous. I can get weighed now. <laughs> Look, just cut out the wisecracks and listen, please. What time will your mother be back tonight? Oh, I don't know. It's bingo night and she's after the snowball. Oh, I see. Yes, well, will she be in tomorrow night then, do you think? Tomorrow night? Friday? Oh, she's sure to be. Yes, well, that's all I want to know. No, oh, ah, yes, there is just one thing. Uh, tell me, <laughs> how old is your sister Susan? Well, after a hard day's work, when she's tired and worn out, you'd think to look at her that she was 25. Yes, yes, yes. But what's her real age? 49. <laughs> <laughs> Extremely good of you to see me, Mrs. Slytherin. No, not at all, Mr. Nicholson. Uh, outside, Jimmy. Especially when you're just going out, you know. Oh, well, that's quite all right. Jimmy, outside. Uh, Mrs. Slytherin, the matter on which I wish to speak to you is most urgent, important, and very confidential. Come on, Jim, outside. <laughs> Thank you. And no hanging about outside the door if you value your life, understand? Yes, ma'am. Shall I bring you a cup of tea in? Uh, no tea for me, thank you. I didn't ask you. <laughs> Jimmy, that'll do. Uh, sorry, ma'am. Just a joke. Uh, well, just going. Go, then. <laughs> I'm sorry about that, Mr Nicholson. Right, Jim, you've come out. If you were Alfie in the army, what would you do? Halt, about turn, two paces forward, march, and I'm bang outside the keel. <laughs> I'll get straight to the point, if I may. I'm very interested in your daughter, Susan. Uh, it's to do with love and marriage. Eh? Hey? It's crackers. <laughs> love and marriage? No, he's not that mad. Granddad. Hey, now then, my lad, what are you doing crouched outside that door? Uh, it's, it's me back, Granddad. Oh, lumbago. <laughs> now, that'll do, Jimmy. And I hope you're not disobeying your mother and listening at the keyhole. No, I'm listening to you. Hey, Grandad, this fellow's called to see me, Mum. I can't stop the talk now. I'm late for the darts match. Now, let me see. There's something I've got to take to the darts match. Now, what the dickens was it? Darts? Aye, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I think I left them upstairs. Good, he's gone. Now, where was I? Oh, yes, at the keyhole. Uh, do I take it that I have your approval, then, Mrs. Clitheroe? Oh, yes. <laughs> and I certainly agree about keeping it a secret at this stage. <laughs> yes, especially where Jimmy's concerned. <laughs> well, that's nice. Anybody would think it was a nosy Parker. <laughs> now, I've made this uh, list, you see, of all the important details. Uh, I'll just check off the important points, shall I? The important points, yes. Well, now, here's Susan's wedding gown. I brought it with me. Wedding gown? What's going on here? A lady will call round later to see to any alterations. I see, yes. And the taxi will call for you and Susan at 9.30 tomorrow to take you to the church for 10 o'clock. Yes. The driver will have Susan's bouquet. Taxi? Church? Yes, that's all right by me. What's going on? I thought my mum's gone mad or I'm in the wrong house. I've arranged it all with the vicar, of course. Oh, yes. oh, and I'll see that you get a special photograph of Susan, the radiant young bride, for yourself. <laughs> <laughs> and may I say how happy I am. I consider myself very lucky to have got Susan. Oh, no. 
Oh, crab apple face is going to marry our Susan. Poor old Alfie, sitting in his barracks, cleaning his rifle, not knowing that his girl's been snatched from under his nose. Hey, he left his phone numbers here somewhere. Has it? Phone Alfie the knight in shining armour to come galloping to the rescue on his motorbike with a bag of gold for Jim. <laughs> now, where's that phone number? It's here somewhere. No, let it ring for a bit, miss. Yeah, there's bound to be somebody there. I'm phoning the army. Come on, answer the blooming phone. I should have sent a carrier pigeon. Hello? Hello. At last, is that the army? Well, yes, this is the orderly room. Uh, Pimlico Barracks. Where have you been? On leave? <laughs> Who is this? What are you talking about? I want to speak to Alfie Hall, please. Alfie Hall? Hall? Uh, well, what, what is he? I wouldn't like to say. <laughs> is it Terry, Terry, Terry to Terry <laughs> From Oldham. Oh, he's a terrier. Yeah, but he looks more like a cocker spaniel. <laughs> oh, Alfred, yes, I know him. He talks a lot. Yeah, but he says nothing. That's him. <laughs> yeah, well, we've got two halls here, but only one Alfred. Well, there couldn't be two like him. It wouldn't be fair to the country. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, wait a minute. You're in luck. He's just outside the orderly room. Uh, painting the rocks in the Colonel's garden. I'll get him. Hold on. Painting rocks? I thought they used guns, not catapults. <laughs> hey, what was that my granddad told Alfie to do in the army? Oh, I know. Remember, son, if it moves, salute it. If it doesn't move, pick it up. If it's too big to pick up, paint it. <laughs> Hello, this is Private Doll, number 2768, number 2673, five, four, three, six, seven, three, three, five, four, three, six, seven, four. Oh, Belto, Alfie! It's Jimmy! It's Jenny. Oh, you're Jenny from the Nappy. Well, if it's about them four cream cakes, I didn't teach them, I'd rather them. One of them is Jumpy. It's Jimmy, Jimmy Clitheroe. Jimmy? It's Jimmy. You, you're Jimmy, young Jimmy. How did you guess? <laughs> hey, well, well, what are you doing in the nappy? I'm at home, you big... Our Susan's getting married tomorrow morning. Oh, oh well, I'll, I'll have to send this delicate give up. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm getting married. Calm down. Oh, I mean, oh, oh, when, where, take who is it, it easy. Attention! Now listen quietly. Susan is marrying a bloke called Nicholson tomorrow morning at ten o'clock. Jimmy Clitheroe, this is one of your stories. I'll, I'll murder you when I get home. It's the truth. I heard him ask me, ma'am, not half an hour ago. This is Daffy. She can't meet the bloke and marry him all in a week. For all you know, they might have been planning it for months. Well, the wedding dress is here already, so she must have ordered that long ago. Oh, no. Well, are I, I, you sure where? Yeah, I've seen it. Wait a minute, there's a list here. He gave it to me, Mum. I'll read it. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Susan married somebody else. My Susan, the girl I love. My little rare sunshine. Oh, ain't it sickening? <laughs> Shut up! Well, look, they're not going to do it. I won't let her leave me and go off with somebody else. Well, it'll be a bit crowded, three of you on the honeymoon. <laughs> Here's the note he left for me, Mum Alfie. It says, Church, St. Joseph's, time 10 a.m. Bride's name, Susan Clitheroe. Taxi will call for bride and mother at 9.30 a.m. Don't say any more, I'm coming home. When do you finish at the camp? Well, I'm, I'm here till 8 o'clock in the morning. Well, the wedding's at 10, so if you hurry, you'll just be in time to throw some confetti. I'm coming tonight. Look, I'm going to dessert. 
Wait, wait a minute, it's eight o'clock. I'll be early midnight. I'll come to your house and sort them all out. Just a minute, you, you can't let on. I told you, Mum will scout me for listening at the keyhole. I know. When you get to our house, throw something at my window and I'll come down and let you in. Throw soil, not a brick. <laughs> and when you're in, I'll wake no Susan and bring her down. But don't let on, I told you. Be right, Jim, I'll be there. Oh, well, thanks for telling me. I won't forget it. If you do, I'll remind you next time I'm broke. <laughs> charming yet. <laughs> oh, heck, I wish you'd hurry up. I wonder how much she'll give me. Ten, Bob? No, it's after midnight. Double for night work. A pound. <laughs> Hello. That must be him now. I'll open the window, save him breaking it. When he throws the garden up. <laughs> Good. Alfie? Alfie? Is that you? <laughs> <laughs> him all right. <laughs> Hang on your cloth, I'll come down and let you in. <laughs> come in, Alfie. Alfie, where are you? <laughs> Alfie, where are you? I'm getting something off my back. It's under here. It's hard, my finger. Oh, I'm stuck. Oh, oh. quiet. I'll, I'll come and help you. What a dope. Now, what's wrong? Oh, it's all right now. I was getting these chocolates I brought for Susan. What was... Oh, no. The front door slammed. Oh, well, come on, let's go in. You, you must be cold standing out here in your dressing gown. Oh, <laughs> you fool. The front door's closed itself. It's locked. We've had it. Oh, uh, well... We'd better knock them up. Don't be daft. Look, my window's open. We can get Grandad's ladder and climb in. Yeah, of course, that's it. Well, where is it? Just round the side of the house here. Come on. You're right, you read the way. Just follow me and mind the dustbins. You are. Mind you don't bang into the... <laughs> dustbins. Alfie, you're not trying. You only knock one over. We've got two. <laughs> you great, stupid... Oh, shut up. That's it. I might have cut my head open. It's a good job you didn't cut your head open. I know that. Yeah, the place would have been flooded. <laughs> ah, very funny. Now, where's this blooming ladder? Here, pick up the front end and I'll take the back. Yeah, all right. Right, off you go and take it easy. We don't want... Them to wake up and think the house is being burgled. All right, all right. Look, I'll, I'll keep over to the left, away from the dustbin I knocked down. Get where's the other one? Yeah. It's on your blooming chest, you clumsy elephant. <laughs> they won't think we've come to burgle the house. They'll think we've come to blow it up. What's going on down there? Who is it? Now you've done it, Alfie. Me granddad's up. Your word. But his window. He goes mad if anybody wakes him up. It's the thought of all the beer he's wasted putting himself to sleep. <laughs> what is it, Father? Oh, somebody outside falling over everything. Probably some old drunk. Quick, Alfie, sing Nelly Dean. You are? Be drunk, pretend, <laughs> then they won't know it's you. Walk slowly round the front singing your head off. Put this pebble in your mouth and you'll sound drunk. Yeah, but look, I'm, I'm not giving you what are you doing? That's perfect. You start singing. I don't know, Nelly Dean. Sing anything. Oh, all right. She loves me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Bell top oh. ringo. <laughs> you sound like a drunken cockroach. <laughs> yeah, I know one, Jim. Oh, we ain't got a barrel of money. Well, that sounds Maybe drunk enough. Keep going. If you don't clear up, you'll be sorry. Keep it up, Alfie. It's working. 
I'm warming you for the last time. Good lad, Alfie. When you finish that, give him his favourite. I belong to Glasgow. I belong to Glasgow. Well, that does it. The but Kenneth McKellar of Oldham. But it's going round and round. You've done it, Alfie. He's gone. Don't stop. Keep going till you get right past his window. Yeah, right, I'll... I'm oh, I didn't want you to oh, heck, he's back. Ow! And he brought something with him. <laughs> I'm soaking wet. He's drowned me. Alfie. Is that you, Alfie? You've thrown a bucket of water over Alfie. Yeah, I'm not me. What are you doing? Not that, yeah, I'm, I'm not me. I'm not Alfie. I'm not here. I'm drunk. I mean, I'm... <laughs> <laughs> oh, be silly. We know it. Who's that with you? Oh, sure, it's PC Lynch, Mum. we <laughs> <laughs> got to be jabers, me dad. I'm, I'm just after taking this whole drunk to me head. Car be jabers. <laughs> He's doing a rotten impression of an Irishman. <laughs> now, you st- you do stop there by the front door and we're coming down. Oh, hey, you fixed it now, Alfie. All. You, I did what you said. I, I sang like a drunk with a pebble in me... With a pebble... A pebble... A pebble with swallow, swallowed me pebble. <laughs> I, I swallowed me pebble. to wash it down. <laughs> Look, when they come down, I know nothing. I'm an innocent spectator. Right. Inside, both of you. You're right, Grandad. Uh, come on, Alfie. And don't forget, I know nothing. Y- yes, you're ignorant. <laughs> well, this is a fine thing, I must say. Get in the lounge there, near the fire. Yes, I'm, I'm frozen. Not you. Alfie, you get upstairs and bring Alfie a bath towel. Yes, ma'am. Um, I'd just like you to know what a big surprise this has been. Upstairs and get that towel. Alfie, what's happened? I thought you were still at the camp. If he doesn't say the right thing, he'll be in hospital. <laughs> well, I'd better get that towel quick before they brainwash him. <laughs> that wouldn't take very long. <laughs> Here we are. Jimmy, what's all the noise about? Oh, oh, you, Susan. You're the cause of it. Come on downstairs while I give this towel to Alfie. Alfie? Where is he? Shivering in the lounge. Come and see. You can't miss him. He'll be the one standing in a puddle doing the shake. (laughs) But why is he here? To thump you. I know nothing about it. But tomorrow the bride will be wearing black in both eyes. (laughs) Here she is, Alfie. You clout her and I'll catch her. Alfie, what's happened to you? If there's any clouting to be done, Jimmy, I'll be doing it. To you. You what? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, Jimmy. I didn't tell them. I mean, I didn't want to. I, I, I said you didn't tell me when you phoned. I mean, I mean, the... Blabbermouth! <laughs> what is all this? Jimmy told Alfie you were getting married tomorrow. What? Y- yeah, and you're not. I mean, it, it was just a photograph for a magazine, Jim. A- an advert. Oh, heck, uh, still, that's all right. There's no harm done. There's no harm done. Alfie's a deserter. I drowned him with water, and we've all been dragged out of our beds. Yes, and just a minute, Jimmy. How did you know anything about this at all? Well, I heard... I thought I... I, I, I got a message. Spirit. <laughs> mental telepathy. Telepathy. <laughs> telegram. I know. He was listening at the keyhole again. I nearly caught him. That does it. Jimmy, what have you got to say? I think I'll say me prayers. Those involved with the Fiddler Road Kid this week were Peter Sinclair as grandfather, Patricia Burke as mother, Danny Ross as Alfie Hall, and Diana Day as Susan, with Derek Guyler and John Graham. The recorded program was written by James Casey and Frank Roscoe, produced by James Casey, and starred Jimmy Clitheroe as the kid himself. In case you were worried, Alfie didn't get...
get court martial for leaving camp on Friday night. When he checked up the drip, he found he should have come home Friday morning. <laughs> the magazine's out with our Susan's picture. Everybody's talking about her. Mind, I can't hear them because as a punishment for eavesdropping, they've made me walk round all day wearing our Susan's